Calling a game ambitious can come with an implied caveat. A game with great ambition can be something that reaches high and far, but can also be one that doesn't quite get there. Alan Wake 2 is one of the most ambitious games I have ever played, but don't misconstrue that, as it doesn't fall short of its lofty goals. On the contrary, Alan Wake 2 achieves virtually everything developer Remedy Entertainment set out to do. It's a game that feels novel and risky that is executed with confidence and a clarity of vision. The end result is a one-of-a-kind sequel that redefines the series, blazes trails in video game storytelling, and stands as the monument to a studio that has unlocked its potential to the fullest. I'd use my writing to project myself out of this room, like a deep sea diver to go deeper and explore the depths of this prison for a way out. This room was my boat. Writing was my lifeline. I would start again at the talk show. Picking up 13 years after the original game's events, Alan Wake 2 is made with two audiences in mind. Those who may be new to its mystery-laden plot, and those who have been decorating figurative cork board with red strings in their minds for over a decade. This is a smart way to broaden appeal to a bigger audience that Remedy executes by splitting the game into two campaigns, both unfolding using an unconventional structure. In one campaign, FBI Special Agent Saga Anderson arrives at the once quaint Bright Falls, Washington to investigate a series of disappearances and ritualistic murders. Saga is joined by her partner, Alex Casey, and becomes the perfect proxy for the uninitiated as she is soon enveloped in the juxtaposition of Bright Falls' understated but haunting atmosphere and its quirky and often upbeat townsfolk. Turning over crime scenes in an unsettling forest rich in folklore, Saga's storyline combines the rustic foreboding feelings of the Blair Witch Project with the unflinching grit of a Fincher-esque dark crime drama. The other campaign, meanwhile, sees you play as the titular Alan Wake and picks up in a nightmare realm called The Dark Place, where Alan has been trapped since the end of the first game. This malevolent space feeds off of art and memories alike, creating a personalized prison for all who enter it. Saga's and Alan's stories bleed into one another at times, and somehow Remedy has ensured that the tonal shifts never detract from the overall experience, and instead offer more texture. Depending on the order in which you experience each chapter, you might have one sequence come across as sinister and foreshadowing, while another player that has taken a different path may see the same events as dramatic irony, knowing the hero is walking into wickedness. By playing all angles, the full story comes into view. <gasps> while 2010's Alan Wake had horror elements to it, Alan Wake 2 is a true survival horror experience, complete with many of the genre's established touchpoints. As either character, you'll need to manage a puzzle-like inventory, find respite from approaching monsters in safe rooms, and try your best to line up headshots with a variety of guns you typically unlock from some sort of locked display case. In the original game, combat encounters were meant to be tense, but not exactly scary, as evidenced by its frantic gameplay that consisted of bobbing and weaving around half a dozen monsters at a time. Here, the action slows down and tends to involve fewer but hardier enemies, a recipe that'll be familiar to horror fans. Managing a small horde of different taken enemies, often each with their own attack patterns, becomes an engrossing exercise in survival. I enjoyed how these taken look and largely still behave like the ones I'd seen in the original Alan Wake but each is spongier and smarter, meaning instead of dispatching perhaps multiple enemies with one round of ammo like I could in the first game, in Alan Wake 2, I'd more often have to evade and buy myself time to reload just to take out one enemy. In the first game, you could also hit an enemy with a quick burst of light at no inventory cost in order to stun them and gain some separation. Now, though, batteries are much more limited, and this flashlight technique, though it still critically removes their inky shields, doesn't do much to ward them off after that. Enemies can also regrow their shields of darkness, meaning you have to choose when to put the pressure on and very intentionally see it through, or else you've burned through precious resources for nothing. The original game's combat loop had a lot of style, but not so much substance. Ellen Wake 2 strikes a better balance in a way that lends itself to its shift towards being a survival horror game. In that sense, Ellen Wake 2 doesn't redefine the gameplay leanings of the genre, but it uses them deftly nonetheless. 
I typically had just enough ammo to get through an encounter, which may have left me limping to the next safe haven light that would let me catch my breath and plan my next move through the lush but intimidating forest surrounding Cauldron Lake. Sometimes the best decision was to flee a scene, which would shift the encounter from a gunfight against wispy shadow men to something more akin to a slasher chase. While foundational survival horror mechanics are shared across both timelines, their moods, aesthetics, and themes are quite different. Saga Story plays like a police procedural, allowing the expert criminal profiler to use her almost supernatural deductive reasoning skills to work through a twisted case of cult murders and bewitched folklore. The backdrop of the gloomy Pacific Northwest is more the killing than the original game's Twin Peaks, though the region is still full of peculiar denizens, some of whom are genuinely hilarious. Seriously, everyone is going to love the Koskela Brothers' TV ads. Many local attractions have recently become fenced off by the government, and that's why at Koskela Brothers Adventure Tours we say, F*** the government. We have both cutters. To further immerse you in the investigation aspect of her mission, you'll fill out Saga's case board, which winds up having an additional benefit. Not only does it fulfill the detective fantasy of linking clues with taut red strings and cracking the case, but it serves very well as a helpful visual guide through the twisting and twisted story. Remembering names, events, and locations becomes much easier when it's laid out in her mental map, the mind place. Given how gorgeous and detailed the game is, I'm curious how some of its technical feats are possible, such as moving seamlessly between the mind place and the real world. It seems a testament to the studio's in-house Northlight engine that the game can run well, look incredible, and somehow still at times defy my admittedly limited understanding of video game tech. And for a game about light and darkness, it's downright hypnotic in how it uses each scene to create a virtual portrait of its settings, with amber sunlight reflecting through the thick trees around Cauldron Lake as heavy rain soaks the forest, effectively creating a dreary mood. Though we've seen other iterations in previous games, Alan's version of the Dark Place today manifests as a haunted noir metropolis where neon signage and hotel lobbies soaked in smooth jazz are offset by shadowy assailants that lurk menacingly throughout the ever-shifting city. All the while, Alan finds echoes of Alex Casey conducting an investigation. This is a different Casey than Saga's partner, with this one coming from Alan's own crime fiction novels that made him famous before Alan sunk out of the physical world. And this is one of the many intentionally crafted points of intrigue and confusion that Remedy expertly plays with. New to the series, Alan's plot board serves as something of a gameplay analog to Saga's case board, albeit with different effects. It allows him to alter reality by discovering different story details in a level that are then used like an ability, tool, or weapon upgrade. For example, in the Ocean View Hotel, you might arrive in a hotel lobby, discover an echo of a Casey story that clues you into how you can alter the scene, and then instantly do so as Alan rewrites his story, which is reflected in-game with a technically impressive instant switch in the environment. It uses a subjective puzzle mechanic that asks the player to consider narrative merit, but its rules are clear even as the pathing can be purposely dizzying, so no instance ever balloons too big. Using a stunning blend of live action scenes that often spill into the game's rendered world, Alan Wake 2 frequently offers some of the most elaborate and beautiful imagery I've seen in the medium. Remedy has always been in favor of live action elements in its games, but it's never been used to this extent or in this particular way. Far from the stop and go nature of Quantum Break's live action episodes pulling players out of the game, here, it's more of an evolution of a style Remedy first used to create effect with Control's hotline segments, where superimposed visions of characters and echoes of voices from another time and place creep into a scene, giving it a layered, audiovisual flourish that strangely no one else in video games seems to attempt. Further enhanced by an intense focus on music that builds upon and actually outshines Control's ashtray maze, Alan Wake 2 stretches the definition of what a video game is and becomes an arresting multimedia fantasy that few studios would likely dare to attempt. There are multiple scenes in this game, in Alan's campaign especially, that will surely be poured over and talked about with reverence, much like Control's Ashtray Maze was. Even if you've been waiting for this sequel for a long time and think you know every theory and have explored every inch of the story universe, you are simply not ready for what Alan Wake 2 has in store for you. 
That's another wonderful thing about Alan Wake 2. Not only is it a gorgeous, eccentric, and immersive game, it's also meta as hell. That's very meta indeed. You see, Initiation tells the story of a fictional writer named Alan Wake, who is trapped in a nightmare, desperately trying to find the manuscript of a novel he has forgotten he has written. Alan Wake 2 wraps nightmares inside time loops tied to a distortion of the monomyth inside a metaphysical world that bleeds into reality, blurs fact and fiction, and spins out doppelgangers in every which way. And it does it all, not just to be weird, but to tell an elaborate story about writing, balance, irony, and so much more. As perplexing as it certainly is, and as hazy as some of its answers to mysteries may be, Alan Wake 2 feels like it wants to be understood. It just wants you to sweat a little in getting there. And it doesn't intend to give away everything yet anyway. There are parts of this game that I interpret to be Remedy talking about its own journey in returning to the world of Alan Wake after such a long time away. It does this in such a layered and lovably strange story that even after Control, which felt like Remedy had stepped up its narrative ambition significantly, it now seems as though Remedy has found yet another new benchmark for itself, while creating new avenues that we may see replicated by other teams in the future. At one point, I worry that Sam Lake, Remedy's creative director, may be retiring after this because it feels so vision complete and full of purpose. Like a last hurrah and having finished the game, I wonder how the studio will top it. The Remedy Connected Universe, RCU, also comes into view like never before in Alan Wake 2. Making the game not just an Alan Wake sequel, but also includes a continuation of Control story, some legally transformative nods to Max Payne and Quantum Break, and an apparent setup for the next RCU game. The details light my brain on fire with the bewildering possibilities and implications Alan Wake 2 creates. The idea of what Alan Wake 2 could be has changed so much over the years. But in playing the game, I was reminded of Sam Lake saying how happy he was that all the previous versions of the game never worked out, and how excited he was that this is the Alan Wake 2 the world has finally received. I have to empathetically agree. The mere existence of Alan Wake 2 would have, at different points over the years, felt like a minor miracle before it to be this one that feels singular in its achievements and coming from a studio that refuses to shy away from the paths less traveled makes Alan Wake 2 a miracle illuminated. <laughs>